let's get to your book that will be dropping in the spring. Actually, it will be in August of next year. Okay. It's too, it's too, so apparently there is a long time frame. Having been in magazine and digital publishing my whole life, I had no idea how book publishing <laughs> works. And so it will be coming out in August of next year. Excellent. Well, it is called hashtag she is me, how women can save the world. So what were your reasons or concerns that led you to writing this type of book? Like, why now? Why, why this well, particular point? Well, it's based point? upon over 30 years of my interviewing very strong and uh, powerful women in the world, in the political world, in the business world, um, in every stay-at-home moms, et cetera. Uh, as I said, we have more commonalities than we have differences. And for too often, the mainstream media has been dividing and conquering, you know, stay-at-home moms versus career moms. No, this is, this is <laughs> not what... It's not the reality, and too often we fall into that framework of, of um, battling one another. We have so much in common, than, more in common than we have as, as, as different. And with so many women throwing their hat into the presidential ring, it's very important that women come together and realize how we're all in this thing together. Um, so she is me. I have seen qualities, I've witnessed qualities that women display that have made them extremely successful. For example, let's look at the Prime Minister of New Zealand, right, after the Christchurch mm -hmm. massacre. She did not declare war, right? She used what are called so-called feminine soft <laughs> qualities like compassion and empathy, right, to bring the country together. Which good leaders should do, male yes, or but, female, yeah. Yes, unfortunately, and we went, we talked about this before because men, boys, are born into a world where they're told not to cry, where they're not supposed to show their emotions. So male leaders primarily use tactics like war and violence, right, to fight against, to eliminate threats to their country. That hasn't worked, has it? That has not worked. What that does is send innocent people to their deaths civilians get embroiled in it. They are killed by it. I, this is not what, what works. Men have been, you know, um, the leaders of our country, our country, always our country. There has ne never been a female leader of our country. We got close. Obviously, we had the most ex um, experienced person to ever run for presidency in our country, Hillary Clinton, right, in an election against um, someone who was the least experienced in our country to, to ever run for presidency, Donald Trump. And Donald Trump won over the most experienced person to ever run. So it's not based on experience, it was based on, on him being male, right? And also based upon the patriarchy not wanting to lose their privilege and their power. Let's see what and happens in 2020. A, Let's well, see what happens. Yeah. But we need to address that. If men were more apt to use, utilize the, what we call the, the softer and unfortunately weaker qualities of leaders, then it wouldn't matter if it's a male or a female running the country because those important qualities would be used. Mm -hmm. But right. unfortunately, they're still deemed as female qualities. And I think it's important for men to look at it, it's not um, healthy for them to deny their normal emotions, right? That's why men die earlier. They have greater stress. That's why they're more prone to stroke and heart attack, because they're not allowed. They're not Everything's internalized. To be, it's yeah. internalized and then comes out as violence. It's not healthy for men. It's not healthy for women. It's not healthy for, for anybody. So that's the purpose of this book, okay. to show 